Staff Sergeant First Class Martin Gold, clarinetist and bass clarinetist with the United States Army Band Pershing Zone. Today, I'm going to get you started on this glorious, glorious instrument. Follow me. Before we begin to assemble the bass clarinet, let's talk about the different parts. Just like with our little cousin, the B-flat clarinet, the bass clarinet comes in five parts. They just are shaped a little bit differently. The bell, the lower joint, the upper joint, the neck instead of a barrel, and the mouthpiece. Before you open your case, make sure that you're opening it right side up. The last thing you want to do is open it upside down and have everything spill out. So, each case is a little bit different based off of what kind of bass clarinet you have, but generally there are two or three latches that will open and fold up, and the brand name of whatever instrument you have, Yamaha, Bundy, Selmer, whatever, will be so that you can read it right side up. All right, so let's talk about building. Uh, some t teachers like to start with the mouthpiece and the reed. I like to start from the bottom and build my way up. So the first two parts I'm going to take are the bell and the lower joint. Now, each bass clarinet is a little bit different. Each model is a little bit different. So you may or may not have a pad, you know, a mechanism on the bell. In my case, I do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thumb and hold that closed like this so that this doesn't get in the way. This other part of the mechanism doesn't get in the way when I put these two parts together. So I'm going to take this. Put my lower joint in just like that. Now, what happens if you have a cork on the end of the lower joint that's brand new or is really tight? Well, this is where you take your cork grease. So let me show you how to use that. Cork grease will generally come in either a tube like this that looks like chapstick, please don't use it as chapstick, or it will come in a little tub. Either way is fine, it doesn't really matter. Put a little bit on the cork right there, just like that. And take your finger and rub it in nice and nice and good, just like that. So you get it all over. Now, you don't have to do this every day, but you should do this if your cork is brand new or if it's tight. If you have to struggle to, to uh, put the pieces together like that, just use cork grease until you don't have to anymore. Now it's time for the upper joint. Now, fitting the upper joint and the lower joint together is the trickiest part because you've got all these keys and all these keys on the lower joint. And the last thing you want to do is mash them all together. But generally there's a bridge between these two parts. And like I said before, bass clarinets aren't this, exactly the same from model to model. So things vary. But generally there's a bridge right here. There's a part right here and a part right there. And it's pretty obvious how it fits together. Now you don't want to do like, like wild... Uh, twisting motions like that because you'll jam everything together. But generally you want to put your right hand down here below all the keys, um, but not be careful not to bend the rods. You want to put your left hand up here like that, like so, to give yourself a little bit of space and just slide them all together. Now, your instrument should come with a floor, floor peg. If it doesn't, uh, toss your band director. So, but generally you're going to have something that slides into the lower joint like this, the bottom, and rests on the floor, either a ball or like a rubber stopper, or sometimes it's just a piece of metal. But whatever you have, generally, there is a mechanism on the bottom of the bell, or towards the bottom of the bell, that looks something like this. And you slide the floor peg in like so. Right, it's a neck. Okay, this is a little tricky too, because there's a mechanism on the neck that you don't want to ram into the other mechanism that is on the upper joint. So you'll see the back of the upper, top of the upper joint has this little peg sitting up here. And you fit the neck in just like so. If you need cork grease, use cork grease. And the part of the neck should be in back of the part on the upper joint. There sh it should be pretty obvious when you've got it centered. Before we do anything else, I want to talk about how important it is uh, to use a stand. And there you go. The last thing that you should ever, 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 ever do with your bass clarinet is put it on a chair because that is an invitation for somebody to come, lo come along and knock it over. So please don't do that. Please get a stand. So now let's put the mouthpiece together. So we have our mouthpiece right here. We have our ligature, which holds the reed on, and we have the reed. 
when you're removing the reed from the case, and usually will come in a little plastic case like this, always handle it by the bottom or thicker end. The, don't ever touch the tip of it, which is very thin, and it will break the reed if you handle it. So, before you can put the reed on the mouthpiece, you have to get it wet, otherwise it won't play. Put it in there for a second or two, just enough to get it nice and wet. Does the same thing as sticking in your mouth. Either way, it's gonna be in your mouth. All right, so now we've got our mouthpiece. We wanna line up the reed with this opening in front of the mouthpiece. You should just barely be able to see a little bit of the mouthpiece over the top of the reed when you're done, when you're looking at it straight on. So now we've got a mouthpiece and reed lined up. Now let's put the ligature on. So I'm gonna put the mouthpiece, very careful not to ram it into the tip of the reed because it will break, all right? Now there is generally a line on the back of most mouthpieces that should be a guide as to where the ligature goes. You can see it very, very faintly on mine. And you wanna have the top of the ligature either flush with that line or just very slightly below it. Now, if you have a situation like this where the reed's all over to, off to one side, before you tighten the ligature too much, just push it back in place so it's evenly lined up side to side, front and back. There you go, just like that, okay? Okay, we talked about attaching the floor peg earlier. Now let's talk about adjusting the height. So there is a little knob here. Like I said, each one's a little bit different, but loosen it, peg slides in and out. It should rest on the floor, bringing the mouthpiece to where it's level with your mouth so you don't have to hunch over to play and you don't have to stand up to play like that.